Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share with you guys the best barfi recipe. Now this barfi recipe is super simple to make, very easy, and it has minimal ingredients that you need to put into it. Now I know a lot of people, they love the taste of the traditional barfi, but it's a little hard to work with just because you have to work on a sugar syrup and make sure you get that right texture to make sure the barfi is not too soft. So in this video, I'm not gonna be doing a sugar syrup and the pog and all that business. I'm gonna be using ricotta cheese and I'm gonna show you how to take a little shortcut on how to put your barfi together. So if you wanna see how I put this together, please keep on watching. Now in today's video, you guys are gonna be seeing me use my new Koch Steam Red Granite Pot. Now, this is just one of the pots out of a set that they sent me. So I'll be doing an unboxing really soon just to share with you guys everything I got. And this is just one of the pieces. Now, if you're interested in buying this red granite um, pot, I'm going to leave it in the description box down below within all of my Amazon links. So I hope you check that out. Now, besides that, I'm going into my pan on a medium heat with some unsalted butter and I'm going to melt that. And I wanted to mention that if you didn't want to use unsalted butter, you could also use some ghee to put this together. As usual, all of my ingredients and those proper measurements are going to be in the description box down below. Now once your butter is melted and it's a little hot, you're going to go in with your ricotta cheese. A lot of you guys might be thinking that this is a little weird that we're going to make ricotta cheese into barfi, but you guys have to trust me here, it totally works and it was better than the original thing. So all I'm going to do is keep on cooking this until I cook out some of the water content from the ricotta cheese. My ricotta cheese and that butter have been cooking down for about 15 minutes. As you guys can see, it started to get a little bit lumpy because it's drying up and it's coming more to the milk solids that are in the ricotta. Now, I'm using a nonstick pan today. I totally recommend that you do that or some type of coated pan because if you use one that is not and the heat gets too high, it will actually make the ricotta cheese start to get brown and you will have more of a fudge versus a barfi because barfi is usually white. Now into this ricotta cheese mixture after the 15 minutes of it drying down a bit, I'm going in with some freshly ground elaichi, also known as cardamom, and I'm going to mix that in. And once you've mixed in all of your ground elaichi or cardamom, you're going to go in with some granulated sugar. Now whenever I make any type of barfi, I go in with the white sugar just because barfi is supposed to be more of a white thing. However, if you wanted to use the brown sugar, know that it will work, except it will just make it very dark brown. So if you want to do that, go ahead and do it as per your preferences. But basically, I'm going to put the sugar in, I'm going to mix it up really well until it is dissolved. And once it's dissolved throughout that milk pot, I mean the ricotta mixture, you're going to see that it starts to get very liquidy. That's just because the sugar is melting. All we have to do is keep on boiling it down so this way we could reduce it yet again. Now a lot of you guys might be thinking, why didn't I just throw everything into the pot from the beginning and let it boil down like that? I prefer just not to do it that way because the ricotta is very watery and then on top of that when you add the sugar it gets even more watery so it would have taken a long time for all of that to boil down together and it ran the risk of it burning, especially if you're not using a nonstick pot. So that's why I like to do it in stages. But basically after about two minutes of that sugar cooking with the ricotta mixture, it's still going to be a little liquidy except I went in with my milk powder at this point. What the milk powder is going to do is help stabilize it, get it nice and thick, and it's also going to give you that classic barfi texture. Once you've gotten all of the milk powder properly mixed in and you make sure there's not too many lumps in it, you're going to go ahead and add in your ginger powder. Now the reason why I didn't add in the ginger powder in the beginning is just because I feel like the flavor really cooks down by the time you're done cooking it, so I wanted to add it in at the end so I could get a nice little gingery flavor. By all means, if you wanted to use fresh ginger to put this together, you could do that. I just prefer not to have have fresh ginger in my barfi I find that it's a little too pungent so my barfi mixture has been cooking for about 10 minutes at this point and as you guys can see it is starting to get crumbly it's starting to come together really well and it's becoming a tighter mixture now at this point it is not done I want to cook it down just a little bit more so we can get that classic grainy and crumbly texture that you would get from a normal barfi so it does need to cook down more but at this point I like to go in with a little bit of extra cardamom powder just so this way I can get that extra punch of flavor now Cardamom as well as the ginger, when you add them in in the beginning of the cooking process, they tend to cook out and the flavor mellows. So this is why I like to add it in at this stage. If you like a very mild tasting barfi with all of the flavors, then you can go ahead and put them in in the beginning so this way they cook out and they're not too prevalent. After I added in that extra lychee, which was optional, I went ahead and I cooked this down for another five minutes. Again, throughout this entire process, my heat has either been on a medium to a medium low. We do not want this to cook on a high heat or else it will start to burn or get dark brown. And again, barfi is not brown. But basically at this point, once it's not sticking to the spoon, it's leaving the sides of the pot and it's getting very hard to stir and it looks crumbly, that's your indication that it is done. So I've got a little baking dish here. This is a nine by nine inch baking dish. 
and this made a really nice thick barfi. If you wanted to get a thinner barfi, you're going to want to use a bigger pan. If you wanted it even thicker than this, then you're going to want to use a smaller pan. But basically, I put my mixture into this pan that I greased really, really well with a little butter. You could even use some ghee to go ahead and grease it. But all I'm going to do is spread it out really well with my silicone spoon and try to get it as smooth as possible. If you didn't have a silicone spoon, you could use one of those offset spatulas to smoothen it out. You could also even wet your hands with a little bit of butter or some water even. So this way you can pat it down and get it nice and smooth. And you can also put a piece of parchment paper or wax paper on top and smoothen it out that way. Go ahead and use whatever way works best for you. As you guys can see, I've spread this mixture as smooth as possible into the pan. It's still a little bit soft, but that's fine. It will firm up in a few minutes once we let it set. So I'm putting on my sprinkles. Again, barfi is not barfi without sprinkles. You need it on. Um, so that's why I'm adding them on here. You could put as much or as little as you would like. Now, by all means, if you are really not a sprinkle person and you're not feeling this look, you could go ahead and chop some pistachios or chop some almonds or any other type of nuts on it and put it on top. If you even wanted to get fancy with it, you could take some raisins and cherries, cut them up very fine, and you could even mix them throughout the barfi um, mixture and then spread it out that way and let it cool. You could even add coconut to this mixture. The possibilities are endless as far as toppings and little um, accompaniments go with adding into the barfi. Go ahead and do whatever suits your taste buds and whatever your family loves. I'm just going simple with the sprinkles today. And once I get them patted into the actual barfi mixture, I'm going to put this mixture in the fridge. It will set up best in the fridge, guys. And I'm going to leave it there for about two to three hours. Now, this is a very easy barfi recipe. Just give it that time in the fridge to set up, and I promise you will have the perfect barfi in the end. So my barfi has been sitting in the fridge for about three to four hours at this point. If you wanted to go ahead and serve it while it was still soft, you can, but honestly, leave it in the fridge for that couple of hours and you will have the perfect cut barfi ever, perfect texture, and not too soft nor too hard. So I'm just going in with a very sharp knife. I'm being careful not to scratch up my pan too much, and I'm just sliding it very carefully across so I can cut that barfi. Now I'm gonna cut them into very small squares. The reason why I'm cutting them so small is because they were pretty thick. Um, they were about three quarters of an inch thick, which is pretty big. But by all means, if you wanted to cut them bigger or you wanted to cut them smaller, feel free to do that as well. But as you guys can see, once you unveil that barfi and pull it out of the pan, this is one of the best barfis ever. When you cut it and you see those little crumbles on the side of the barfi, that is your indication that the barfi is going to be a perfect texture. It's nice and crumbly. It is not too soft and chewy, which is not something that I like too much. And nor is it too crumbly to the point where it just falls apart as soon as it hits your mouth. I think this was the best bar for you guys. So if you are interested in trying this recipe, the list of ingredients and measurements are in the description box down below. You know where to find them. And if you love this video as much as I did today, please don't forget to give this video a nice big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you are not yet and become part of the Matthews Guyanese Cooking family. I love each and every one of you guys for tuning into my video and checking out what I make each and every time. And of course, next to that red subscribe button, you got to click that bell notification icon and you will be one of the first people to be notified when I post my newest videos and my new cooking journeys. And of course, keep leaving your amazing comments below and I'll see you guys soon with another one of my awesome recipes. Bye everyone.